Okay, so this is a page of details of the giant hogweed. I've done sketchbook illustrations of the giant hogweed before, but the client I'm working for wanted more details. So this is the leaf shape, and I've done this with just a watercolour wash outlined in pencil. And the seeds, which are pretty cool, so these have four sides, on, four stripes on one side and two on the other. And these are different leaf shapes, and these are the young leaves. And these are the stems, which I really like the way they've come out. They've got a lot of bristles, especially right below the petiole, and also these distinctive, um, these distinctive red marks, um, which are part of what caused the problem with giant hogweed. Some people have allergic reactions to it. So yeah, this is all done for um, the Horticultural Society of Sweden. Okay, so here this is a this is um, leaves of the Persian hogweed, which I had to compare in some detail to the giant hogweed. So you can see the leaves are pretty similar. Oh, hold on, here's my other one. But these ones are spikier, and these ones are a bit rounder. The main distinction seems to be the space between these. In the in the giant hogweed, it's concave, the space between the teeth, and in the Persian hogweed, it's convex, bulging out. And there's not so much red flushing on the stems of the Persian hogweed, whereas there is on the stems of the giant hogweed. But then the leaves are very variable in the Persian hogweed, which is a massively problematic invasive plant in, um, in Scandinavia. Um, so this is another of the same kind of problem. Um, of the, it's not a problem. It's another leaf from the same plant. So you can see there's a wide amount of variation. Another thing I had to compare was the flowering heads. So this here is the Persian hogweed, and can you see the shape of the whole um, the whole shape is kind of rounded and domed, and um, the side branches. Let's try and get that in focus. These little side branches are really quite little. Then they're, they're, they're very very small, and the flower itself, which I love, has got these amazing long, crazy, lobed basal petals. I mean, there's some more details to do with the number of rays per flowering head. Whereas with your giant hogweed, I mean, I exaggerated this to show the distinction, much flatter shape. And although they do have on the on the flowers on the outside of each umbel, they have these funny little um, lobed petals. It's not nearly as extreme. Um, and if you see, it's a, how can you see? It's a, it's a heck of a job because you do have to draw each of the flowers in to make sure that you get it more or less right, especially with these, these ones on the um, on the outside. Okay, so this is the sheet of sketchbook studies of the Persian hogweed, Heraclium persicum. Finding information on this was really, really difficult. Partly because it's so familiar, uh, similar to other species. But also, um, partly because it's, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of it. There's a lot of information on the seeds, which seem to be in um, countries like Iran and um, Iraq and stuff used for cooking. So I could find that fine. All right. And I managed to find this information on these beautiful flowers, which, like I said before, about the elongate um, petals, the uh, external flowers. But the actual plant itself is very difficult to find photos of and an image reference of, except showing where it's got really overgrown in Scandinavian settings. And those are often from a long distance away. Um, I'm only saying this to show that it's not all easy painting flowers. Anyway, so th this is a sketchbook study. So we've got the whole plant here. We've got details there. We've got a tonal study of the leaf there and a full color study there and can you see here again the slightly blunt leaves with the con um the convex spaces between them um they've got persistent um persistent petiole bases and the whole plant is is slightly hairy not as hairy as a giant hogweed mind you um and then the flowering head i was really pleased with the way this worked out so yes i drew every flower in which kind of is insane but then i also um Around the outskirts, I put a tiny bit of darkish, darkish kind of neutral tint to make each flower stand out. And then, of course, the centre of each flower is slightly green. And then these little bits of green are to suggest the rays, because, of course, each of these flowering heads is joined by rays. Um, so, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way this looks. I mean, the whole job, this whole job with this particular plant is um, quite interesting to me because... Um, because you're going on what the botanists say and you're trying to make the information you can see from a photo 
make sense with what the botanist says. And then what you have to do as an illustrator is combine the botany, which is all down there in the notes, with what you're drawing. Um, and sometimes there can be a disconnect there. But anyway, so there you go. A little instant lesson on comparing hogweeds.